Hey guys, this is uh, Josh here. Uh, I am hot as balls right now, but it's summer, so that's to be expected. Um, anyway, I want to take you on a tour of the uh, Hans Her House in Willow Street, Pennsylvania. Uh, it's a really neat, neat place, uh, really rich with uh, local history. Um, so yeah, let's 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 go take a look. Where we're standing right now is uh, we're actually on a tract of land that was given by William Penn to uh, to Hans Her and subsequently uh, his uh, descendants. Uh, so this is a pretty big deal. Um, Lancaster in general has a rich history, especially uh, just with part. You know, it was part of the founding of our country, really. Uh, Now, with a name like Hans Herr, you'd, you'd probably expect he's that Hans was German, and that's that's a good assumption. Uh, he was German. He emigrated here from Germany uh, for for religious reasons. Uh, he was uh, part of a group called the Swiss Brethren, which actually was a uh, predecessor to uh, the common Mennonite uh, that you would think of today. And they uh, came to they came to Pennsylvania in 1710 in order to uh, flee from religious persecution in Europe. Uh, th believe it or not, even though Mennonites are typically considered more conservative and more, um, I don't know how to word it, but uh, their, their beliefs are actually a, a lot different than what the traditional church was teaching over in Europe at that time period. Uh, so it was a pretty big deal for them to come over, and Hans Hurst started uh, the first, he was a bishop of the first Mennonite church in America. So this, this is definitely sacred land as far as that goes. Okay, so what you're viewing now is the, uh, it, it, it's a, it's, it's not really a replica because it, it is built out of the same materials that, uh, from the 1700s, but, um, it's not exactly, and it's how it exactly was back, back when it was built, but, this is a blacksmith shop, and uh, blacksmiths were pretty uh, popular back in the day. Not so much anymore, as far as I know, but uh, then again, I'm kind of ignorant on a lot of subjects. So, uh, But you can see this black... Uh, the stones and all, everything in this, in this structure was used by the uh, Hein Weber Barn, uh, which was built before the Revolutionary War. So. Everything in here is original. Um, it's very, uh, it's very interesting uh, to look at. You know, all all stone structure. Uh, I, you know, I. Not that I think this area is haunted, but I like that figure right there scared the crap out of me. Let's zoom in there. I think it's it's supposed to be a figure of a of a guy working as a blacksmith, but really scared the shit out of me. Um, so yeah, very interesting structure there. Oh, I should tell you where I'm taking you guys. Okay, so I'm taking you over to a couple other structures from the Heinz Weber that were uh, from the Heinz Weber barn. So what you're looking at right here is an old smokehouse, and smokehouses were used uh, for meats and other things. Um, yeah, so that this again, this structure isn't. It's, it uses original materials, but it was actually recovered from another another barn. It was brought here uh, to be part of the Hans Herr complex. Um, but yeah, it's a it's pretty it's it's really cool. I remember in kindergarten coming here and uh, you know smelling the smoke, uh, all the smoked meats and everything. So it was pretty uh, it's pretty neat. So yeah, you can see the plaque there. So yeah, all again, all original materials. So everything here, it's not 
nothing here really is a reproduction. Every everything is pretty pretty accurate. Um, you know, definitely things were built with integrity back back in the day, and uh, you know things lasted, which is uh, it's pretty pretty amazing that we're here, you know, two three hundred years later and still able to see it. Uh, so this was a this part of it was also a bake oven, and it, this was also built using materials from the Weber barn. Uh, so you can see there, obviously you you, you put uh, you put well, I assume you put food in there. I don't know. Somehow they made food, uh, but yeah, again, it's it's just really cool how they used the original materials for this. So, all right, let's just keep on walking. Let's go to some other cool areas in here. So, I did not remember this uh, building when I came came on a field trip a while back, but I do remember I. It's it's pretty cool. Uh, so it says uh, I don't know if you can see the sign up there, but it says on this site a Swiss type bank barn was erected in 1892, uh, but it was destroyed in 1929 from uh, from lightning. Uh, so it looks like if uh, if they were open, you'd be able to see you'd be able to see different uh, exhibits and uh, artifacts. But unfortunately, due to this. Uh, do this virus, we can't see that, but that's okay. Uh, honestly, I, I just enjoy seeing the outside of the buildings more than anything, so I hope you guys do too. And you can see here, here's some old, uh, different old, uh, artifacts from descendants that one was from a school this one right here uh, something whatever it was it was built by Christian Herr he was the he was uh, uh, Hans Herr's son that uh, eventually the Hans Herr house became the Christian Herr uh, Christian and Anna Herr house and uh, so, yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay, what you're seeing here is, if you can take a guess, what would you think? I wish they were d giant donuts, to be honest, because I'm pretty starving right now. But they are uh, millstones. And Lancaster County, if you you go on any part of the county, just go on a back road somewhere, you'll, you're gonna find you're going to find an old mill that was standing there. And basically, these mills would uh, essentially. Ah, there we go. The mills were were made to grind up. A lot of them were grist mills, so they would grind up corn and other other uh, foods to, you know, to make other food, and and sometimes to even make flour or other things like that. And uh, unfortunately, th there are a lot of. The mills are still standing, but the ones that are still in operation don't use um, uh, these huge these huge concrete uh, structures anymore. And slipping my mind, so let's go see the sign of what they're called. All oh, right, millstones. So yeah, they were. Um, you know, di the, there were different stones for different uses, and uh, yeah, again, you can see. All over Lancaster County, uh, they're they're still standing. Some are still in operation, but um, yeah, it's just a really neat uh, industry that was here for a while and kind of came and went. But uh, yeah, if you get a chance, there there are a lot of different uh, mills all around Lancaster County to, to check out. So that's pretty cool that they kept these and for display. As you can see, that's an old barn. I 
I think there'd be animals right here if things were normal, but uh, they're not right now, so I assume they're not here anymore. Okay, guys, we're just about there. Oh, and there it is. That is the the oldest structure for uh, me, it's the oldest Mennonite meeting house in uh, Lancaster County. Actually, the oldest structure in Lancaster County and the oldest structure for Mennonite use in America. So this was the start of uh, Mennonite congregations in um, in America. Let's get up closer to take a closer look. Yeah, so this is this is it. You can tell it, it's got an interesting architecture because the uh, the roof is, is sloped. Uh, high sloping roofs um, are pretty common in German architecture, so definitely you know definitely came from Germany. That's for sure. The building itself is made of uh, sandstone. And you can see, uh, it's kind of hard to see, but it says 1719. Again, this building is 100% original. It's it's pretty it's pretty neat to look at. Um, yeah, again, I mean you can go again you can go inside uh, when they're open, but this is a really cool structure because I mean you can just tell by the tiny windows, just everything is uh, is definitely Ger old Germany. That's that's for sure. And again, Hans Herr, along with other uh, congregants uh, from Germany, settled here in 1710. Uh, originally, originally they were they were settled in a part of uh, well, it's now considered part of Philadelphia, but in Germantown. Uh, but they came they came more inland. Um, So yeah, it's a, it's a pretty neat story of how it came to be. And again, this is the very start of Mennonite worship in America. And actually this was before, you know, America as we know it even was started, so it's pretty substantial. What's unique about this house is that if you, at least when you go and look at other houses around the, like if old houses from colonial times or a little after, it's usually pretty small, but this house was built pretty, I mean, it's a pretty big house considering, uh, maybe not big by today's standards, but, uh, back then, you know, I can think of at least probably 10 different houses in Lancaster County that are not near this size. For the, for the time period, so it's pretty. They actually ended up uh, Hans Herr and Christian Herr uh, ended up having uh, Mennonite meetings here. So this was a a meeting place for for everyone as well as a home for the for the family. And um, yeah, so in the eventually the house was no longer used uh, as a house. Uh, so in the early 19, I think it was even before the 1910s, uh, it was just in such bad shape that it wasn't really a livable house anymore. Uh, so it just became sort of a storage unit, unfortunately, uh, for for future generations. However, in 19, 
69, I, I believe it was 69, anyway, in the 60s and 70s, they, uh, the historical society got the, got it and, uh, converted it into, into what we see today, so, again, this is all original stuff, they just, uh, you know, they, they maintained it and, and worked on it, but they didn't alter anything, nothing, there's no modern, like, architecture inside, so it's pretty neat. You're not going to find a more well-built structure and uh, something from the start of our country um, anywhere. So it's, it's pretty unique. Okay, now that we've uh, we've looked at all the different buildings of the Hanser complex, um, there are actually other buildings. So we're, let's, I want to take you to something really cool, though, that, that just happened in recent years. And uh, everything here, obviously, first Mennonite congregation. However, something to keep in mind, uh, and it wasn't, I'm not, not singling the Mennonites out or, or any, any group, uh, but, you know, this nation, as great as it is, uh, there's been a, it has a, a dark history. And uh, I just want to show you something really cool that uh, I think is really neat and helps uh, reconcile with some of the bad things that's happened. So let's, let's go take a look. See, I'm not certain, but uh, I think that, I mean, that house is, that was probably built in the 18, mid-1800s, if I had to guess, as well as that house right there across the street. Again, I don't, not really sure if uh, it's part of, not really sure if it's part of the, of the complex or not, but it's worth showing because it's still really cool. Uh, buildings that are still here, so. Uh, you probably didn't hear what I said, but it doesn't matter. Alright, let's go. Also, uh, we're just going to take this time to make this a public service announcement. Uh, always look, look before you, look twice before you uh, across the road. It would help. Prevents a lot of damage. It's a gorgeous day outside, even though it's, yeah, it's like 100 degrees out here, but... You know what? Oh, shit. Is that Gus? That was a big ass groundhog. Okay, well, I'm going to show you the structure right here. If you want, you can take a guess of what it is while I walk over here. So what you're viewing right here is called a longhouse, or long bar you know, honestly, uh, I, I had a lot of what I was going to say today, but then it, it's a little hot, so, uh, but anyway, uh, it's, this is a, a longhouse or long barn, uh, it was, these type structures were found, commonly found in Pennsylvania, uh, even before any people immigrated here. Uh, this is would have been used by a lot of the different uh, indigenous tribes of Pennsylvania, and uh, specifically the Susquehannocks. Um, yeah, I mean, every almost every town around the area uh, is named after uh, an Indian tribe. So, uh, you know, believe it or not, this is actually this was Indian land that was it was taken away. Uh, and William Penn did try to, he tried to buy the land uh, from from the tribes fairly, but uh, it it just didn't work out that way. And unfortunately, uh, a lot of a lot of land was stolen, and not much has been done. And in Pennsylvania, uh, we're the only state that doesn't have a reservation or uh, really just um, a tri a, a official tribe of Indians. 
so it's a it's a real shame. However, the Hunter, uh, the Historical Foundation, and a couple other groups, they uh, the Quakers, uh, Presbyterians, and uh, Indian tribes, uh, they came together and built this structure. Uh, it's this is not an original structure. Uh, they decided it was a. Uh, in 2010, they had a ceremony commemorating this, so this is a, it's a brand new structure, but it is built modeling, um, modeling the old, uh, longhouses of, uh, of old America, so, uh, it's, it's a pretty neat structure, I mean, you can tell, you can see here, they built it exactly like it would have been built back in the day, um, if you get up close here, this is clearly uh, some kind of wood. I uh, I actually I think they yeah it's some kind of wood here. Um, so yeah, that, it was it's really neat because you know this this land was taken from the people that were here, and it's really cool that people were able to escape re religious uh, uh, issues in Europe. But I mean this was this was Indian land. So um, and and. As a side note, they're not actually Indians, but they're Native Americans. Uh, you know, thanks Columbus. Uh, but uh, anyway, so yeah, it's it's just really neat that they they got they thought, what can we do to kind of bring honor and uh, kind of help reconcile, um, you know, the abuse that Indians have uh, taken over the years. And uh, I'm really happy that they they did something to. Uh, commemorate um, Indian life and uh, uh, you know just sort of give back a little bit and they had a nice ceremony in 2010 so this structure has been here for about 10 years now uh, hard to imagine uh, but yeah it's pretty neat that they this is what this is I mean Hans Hans her and Christian her they had neighbors with houses like these so uh, it was it's pretty cool All right, well, let's just take one last look. It's starting to rain, so uh, not that I really, I don't really care about the rain personally, but uh, might alter the camera a little bit. Again, there's the Hans Her house. Well, the rain uh, cut things a little short. I wanted to stick around, but I think we got going. Uh, but, but hey, if you have a chance to come here, look around yourself. I'm not really sure if I was supposed to be here today or not. Uh, but you know, you only live once, so uh, yeah. So yeah, just really rich history here. Uh, just if you have a chance, take a look at your, at it for yourself. And, uh, yeah, hopefully, well, I try to do some more videos, um, you know, kind of just exposing, uh, local history that you might not even realize that is here, uh, because a lot of the, a lot of, we know of a lot of the tourist trap areas, but I want, really want to tell you guys more about the individual local history here, so, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, uh, have a good day.